high for eye, folks. This week has been the kind of week where... Okay, let's say you've just bought a brand new oven and so you decide to hold a big dinner party to celebrate and you're gonna cook your finest dish. A lasagna with white wine sauce and garden peas. You head out the night before for your supplies only to find they're out of mints. Okay, veggie lasagna it is. Except they're out of pasta too. Looks like you're making ratatouille. Except, ah, there's no tomato puree or white wine either. Never mind. Root veg roasted in herbs and served with big balls of mozzarella is still a really nice Italian style dish that your friends are probably gonna love. So you get home, store the food in the fridge, dive into bed and then oversleep because a power cut knocked out your alarm clock. It also knocked out your fridge, meaning that the mozzarella has now turned into sudzarella and your burglar alarm, so some thieves manage to get in during the night and make off with your brand new oven. You see what I mean? The Gratacast presents... The Show Must Go! The Show Must Go! Oh. Now if that metaphor happened to you, you'd probably cancel the dinner and start browsing pet shops for a really large, terrifying dog, right? But what if you couldn't bear to break the news to the vegetables? Because they were getting so excited about being cooked up for the delectation of your friends. Well then, you'd also be a little closer to my situation this week. You see, I've performed in large-scale amateur shows in Cambridge for a while now, but I've directed small-scale professional productions for about the same length of time. Directing a large-scale amateur performance might not pay the rent in the same way that a small professional one would, but it would still be hugely satisfying putting smiles on a probably larger number of faces. So after six years of unsuccessful applications to Cambridge amateur groups, I was delighted when one finally invited me to direct their October cabaret. However, an unusually high number of amateur shows started auditioning in Cambridge this summer, meaning there were very few people to come along to our auditions. We were looking for a cast of about 25 and we ended up with about 18. Still, my production team was sure that we could make it work. I took two days holiday to prep some of the music and design a rehearsal schedule around everybody's availability. Yep, it really does take that long, especially when you're also trying to make sure that every member of the cast has a solo moment to shine. But I managed it, so there were a lot of really happy and excited faces at the first rehearsal. And the next day, Catastrophe. Unforeseen circumstances meant that some of the cast had to pull out. The committee behind the amateur group decided they couldn't charge people to see such a thin production without risking their reputation and the reputations of all those involved, like me and the cast. It was heartbreaking enough having to flush two days of unpaid work down the drain, but having to call each performer and tell them that their moment to shine would be washed away too, that could have seriously ruined our whole autumn. Yeah, well, of course, one of the first things all my friends said was, hey, just think of all the unexpected spare time you're going to have now. But if you've just had something really delicious taken away from under your nose, it's hard to be thankful for the time you're going to save on washing up your now empty plate. So instead, I looked for blessings in the short life of the project itself. For a start, those auditions introduced me to a few new faces, many of whom are very talented, but also extremely friendly. You never know where new friendships are going to lead, but they are always something you can be thankful for right from the word go. Then there was the planning I'd done, which showed the amateur group just how committed and creative a director I could be. And I guess if the little portion on that plate gets taken away, only to be replaced later with a heaping helping of something equally delicious, well then, maybe my friends were right after all. 
And we can stay on that theme as we turn now to your shout outs, because over on Twitter, Jackie wanted to give some gratitude for home delivery grocery shopping. Isn't that the epitome of modern technology? That you can sit at home browsing images of things that you need for sustenance, pay for them and then have them delivered right to your door? That's like the beauties of combustion and electronics and the internet and sliced bread all in one. So thanks for sharing that one with us, Jackie. We also received some tweets over on Facebook too. They came from Jen, who felt blessed after some swallows chose to use her front door as a nursery for their chicks. Thanks, Jen, for reminding us that sometimes pleasure does come cheap. And finally for this week, Lara has a shout out for the friend who invited her along for a coffee morning and then drove her all 50 meters home. Now 50 meters is a long way to go if you suffer from fibromyalgia, which makes simple actions like walking very painful sometimes. So thanks to Lara's friend for being both inclusive and enabling. Time now for our gratitude, a piece of music to perk you up. And this week's selection is sure to do just that. It's Queen's Hammer to Fall, nominated by Vicky, who remembered that yesterday was Freddie Mercury's birthday. When Freddie's hammer fell, it robbed the world of a seriously talented performer and songwriter. But it also caused huge ripples that raised awareness and funds in the fight against AIDS. So, a big thanks to Freddie for his incredible life and his incredible life afterlife. Hit the link at the end of this video to raise your spirits with the full track. Just before we sign off folks, I thought you should know that Tito is going to be giving us our first reason to claim on his pet insurance tomorrow. He's going to be going in for a little operation on his eye. If you can, spare him a little bit of thought and maybe send him some of your gradict positive vibes. So finally, thank you for watching. Just by watching, you're helping us raise money to fight the debilitating disease, myalgic encephalomyelitis. And you can help some more by sharing this video around and subscribe for more fun videos in the future. Before we leave you though, one last thing. If you're finding a bitter pill is hard to swallow, just remember, it also gives you a longer range in spitting competitions. Stay thankful. I don't know.